guys, it's uh, Jake. I'm gonna take you out on a call with me. It's a cold one out right now. The sun finally came out, so it is warming up. It's uh, about 16 degrees outside right now. Wind chill between negative five and negative 10. The high today is supposed to reach about 20 degrees, 21 degrees. So this sun's definitely helping warm it up some. Uh, guy's got an older uh, R22 Goodman heat pump. I believe it's a two and a half ton split system. He's got his heat set and uh, it's like, I think he sets it at like 65 degrees and it's 60 in the house and absolutely nothing is working. Um, no indoor blower, he can't feel any heat coming out of the vents whatsoever, outdoor units not running. Not sure if we're gonna find a low voltage short or a loose connection or failed thermostat, don't really know, maybe a bad transformer and the uh, thermostat's just operating on battery, who knows. But uh, this one, the indoor unit's in a crawl space and outdoors on the side of the house, so I'm gonna get over there and see if we can't figure out what's going on. It's a brisk one. All right, unit set to 65. 56 inside, I don't hear an indoor blower. Don't think the outdoor unit's running either. Okay, confirm the outdoor unit is not running. We have no blower. And we also don't have 24 volts between C and R. So we're gonna go under the house and try to figure out where we're losing our low voltage. Okay, this is our indoor unit. Looks like we got a leaking water heater. Look at that. Boy, that's not good. It's in the upflow position. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, open it up and uh, see what I find. Maybe we have a short, maybe we don't have high voltage to say, I don't really know. Uh, okay, so this condensate pump does have a float, but it's not uh, wired up and I don't see any other float switches on this thing. Uh, really, this should be have a little insert in it with a cap. It's a cl clean out. So right now, this unit, when it runs, it's gonna suck unfiltered air into the uh, coil cabinet. I just opened this thing up and uh, I'm gonna see if we got high voltage first and then we'll see if we have any uh, low voltage. I can't tell if that fuse is blown or not so let's take a look at it. Okay so uh, we have power up top but uh, nothing coming through the through the actual inline breaker here. We got 248 I can get a good read on it 249 and then if I put my uh, meter do this one-handed here we don't have anything coming through so we got a bad uh, inline breaker here which is why we're losing our low voltage I'm gonna see if I got one of these on my van so that's what we got power coming in but it's not going through this I already reset it and uh, it didn't didn't help so Try it one more time. Either way, we should replace it even if it starts working here. Yeah, nothing. I haven't done le one leg. I might do one leg to ground and just see if I got one leg, but I definitely don't have 230, 240 volts coming through. All right, well, I tried it again, resetting the breaker, um, not getting anything through. I got 249 steady coming in and uh, nothing making it through. Um, Okay, I killed power coming in here, and uh, these are the kind of clips that were on there, on the top and the bottom. And then these clips actually just uh, hooked in, in these uh, gaps here at the bottom. Same with at the top, but uh, the, they won't work on this new one I have. I have, it's a Goodman OEM um, <laughs> inline breaker for a heat kit, but the, uh, the tabs on these, or the wings, are too fat and won't match up with this but it comes with these brackets here so you just put the brackets on they slide in like that see that and then you uh, slide this in here like that and you got screw holes there and you'll have of course if I can get it straight you'll have screw holes here at the bottom as well so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, mount this thing and then uh, We'll wire it up. Since I have this off here, this is a white wire. By code, that should be marked black as a hot. This is a 230 volt, 240 volt unit here. So I'm going to ma mark that with some black tape. Uh, I can't really reach back in there all the way to the back, but I'll go up a good little ways to uh, mark that as a hot. So I'm glad I had this. I keep these in my van 
I need to go restock. This is my last one, so hopefully I got them in stock here. Okay, I got the uh, inline breaker here mounted. Um, had to put a hole in one side on kitty corner. I just basically took a self-tapping screw and uh, drilled me a hole with my 12-volt uh, impact. So it's mounted in there now. It's not going anywhere. I'm going to go ahead and uh, mark this uh, white as a hot and then start uh, swapping these wires out. Got a uh, active leak down here. It's not only at the bottom of the unit, it's coming down from the pipes. You can see it's PVC. He's actually got plumbers scheduled to come out <coughs> and uh, replumb this thing. You can hear it spraying. I can hear it spraying in here. Look at that, man. That's rotten that support completely out. That's not good. All right, I got the uh, inline breaker in here, got the uh, wires off up top, got them secured, got the uh, black tape on the white to mark it as a hot, and uh, when I took these off, I went ahead and pinched the stake-ons with my needle nose pliers. That way I know that they're tight and they're not going to, you know, come off. Whenever I left, pull those kinds of uh, stake-ons off, any, any really, I like to give them a little crimp with my needle nose just to make sure they're tight. You know, a loose connection is going to be a burnt connection, especially on something like this, high voltage. So I just went ahead and crimped each one and uh, made sure that they slid on nice and tight and give them a little tug test there. All right, I think what I'm going to do is uh, restore power over here at the uh, breaker panel. It's over here next to the uh, water heater that is uh, spraying water. Make sure I have high voltage here and then uh, flip this on make sure I have high voltage passing through it <coughs> and I would think that the thermostat then should uh, start sending a call for heat it's probably going to go into a time delay but we'll make sure this thing is functioning okay I restored power at the breaker panel tested voltage up here I had my voltage 248 volts kicked the power on here and uh, right about the time I got my test probes down there the unit went ahead and kicked on no time delay at 248 here at the bottom outdoor units running indoor units running and uh, smells like the heat strips are running too so I'm gonna do an amp draw on the uh, heat strips here make sure that they are functioning but uh, the unit is running all right I went ahead and put an amp clamp on the uh, two heating elements here we had uh, 20 20.4, 20.3 on each uh, element here. So we're getting uh, 20 amps on each of them. This is a 10 kW heat kit on this two and a half ton heat pump. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut this door so that we're not pulling air in past this coil. I want that air going through the coil. All right, I uh, tested out on that one, put some probes on the return and supply. Everything tested out okay. I asked if they wanted me to hook up some probes to the outside unit check the charge while I was there. They declined that. They didn't want to spend the additional $40, $50. I figured it'd take me about 30 minutes uh, total. Uh, so I call that one okay. Uh, unit kicked right on after I replaced that uh, inline breaker. Uh, call that one fixed. Um, I wish I would have been able to check the charge. I, I checked the temperature split, the uh, ductwork down there. This is an old farmhouse in a neighboring town and uh, it, it's pretty bad. Uh, they had a pretty high split uh, with that 10 kW heat kit going and the two and a half ton heat pump at about a 60 degree temperature split with the heat strips firing. So they're really just not moving enough air through that system. So they just don't can't afford it. The guy's got to put in a uh, new water heater on Wednesday and he's going to have the whole house replumbed with uh, PEX, PEX piping. So I guess he told me that's going to be I think he told me six thousand sixty five hundred dollars something like that to uh to have that done so strap for cash that seems to be the uh common thread around these parts at least uh most people are pretty hurting for money and uh i know how that is man it's it's rough out here everything costs a fortune and uh man it seems like when it's your turn to take a beating you take a beating right now I'm heading over to my next call. I'm not sure if I'll record this one. The guy who uh, I'm going to the house, he's always on me, so he likes to chat too. So I probably won't record that one. But anyways, just want to say uh, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. If you haven't already, hit the like button, leave a comment, and uh, subscribe to the channel if you feel like it. If not, no worries. I understand. 
You guys stay safe out there. Get home safe to your families. Talk to everybody later. Take care, guys. Forgot to mention this. If you guys want to check out some channels, uh, go to my uh, channel page and uh, under the featured channels section, you can find some channels that I like to follow, like uh, My HVAC Life, Zach's Shop Talk, Steve Lavi Monier, WWHVAC, different guys that I really enjoy uh, watching and following on here. Some are HVAC related, some aren't. Uh, I got a couple other guys on there featured that I like to follow, like South Texas Roots, Simply Southern, The Crockers. Uh, you know, it's different content, but uh, and I'm, I'm so small, this isn't going to help them much at all. I used to have 30,000 subscribers before I deleted my channel and all my content, but I don't know if I'll put the work in to build my channel up like that ever again or not, but I figured I should mention that if you want to check out that uh, featured channels on my uh, page there. Uh, might give you some different channels you can check out. You might enjoy their content. Alright guys, 